Welcome to College Algebra Tutorial. The first topic we're going to discuss is properties of radicals, and this should be review for a college algebra student, but if it's not or it's been a while, um, this will give you a good background. This is a typical form for a radical expression. Here n is called the index. or the root we're taking. A is called the radicand. So what I what this I'm looking for is if the nth root of A equals something, I want to know what do I have to raise to the nth power to give me A. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, so um, let's look at a couple things here. So the fourth root of 16. Well, what to the fourth power gives me 16? Well, it happens to be 2. Okay, so the fourth root of 16 is 2. Now, what if I change this a little bit? Okay, so this is number one. And looked at this. The fourth root of a negative 16. So I want to ask myself, what to the fourth power gives me negative 16? Regardless of what the base is, whether it's positive or negative, can I ever raise something to an even power and get a negative answer? No, because a negative to an even power is positive, and a positive to an even power is positive. So for this, there is no real solution. The answer is actually complex. It doesn't exist as far as we know it in, you know, physicality. It does come up in several applications, but we will discuss that later. Um, the third section that you are assigned is about complex numbers. Now, so um, properties of radicals. The first is you cannot take the even root of a negative number and get a real solution. Also, the radicand, A, cannot have a factor that has the given root. Next, if there is an exponent to a power underneath the radical, the exponent under the radical cannot have a common factor. within or the index. Next, the radicand 
or I'll just refer to it as A in our expressions, cannot be a fraction. And usually, we do not write an expression that contains a fraction, or that contains, excuse me, a radical in the denominator of a fraction. Unless it's otherwise indicated. There are times when you, it is acceptable to leave the radical, but only if it's indicated to leave that radical in the bottom of the fraction. Now, getting the process of getting the radical out of a bottom of a fraction is called rationalizing. The denominator because we want to get the radical, which is usually um, an irrational number out of the denominator of the fraction. These are the rules we are going to use to simplify radicals. Okay, so this is how we are going to simplify a radical expression. That's the end of this tutorial. You can pick up the next one in just a moment. Thank you.